few weeks ago, Jimmy Garoppolo did an interview with Adam Shine and said that last year was strange, and I'm not sure I would wish that on anybody. What did you see, if anything, to suggest that Jimmy G was going through a year that he wouldn't wish on anybody? I mean, everybody can see it. When you trade three first-round draft picks for a quarterback, it kind of has a writing on the wall, doesn't it? I mean, uh, and Jimmy did nothing but be a professional every single day. He didn't complain about it one time. He wasn't in the corner, you know, talking crap about, you know, the situation. He showed up every day as the starting quarterback of the San Francisco 49ers. Um, and he went out there and practiced every day. He worked hard every single day. He set good examples for all the young guys, for all of us. And he motivated everybody. So, like, I don't know if there's a better professional in the NFL than Jimmy Garoppolo with how he dealt with that situation. And I think he, you know, he made everyone around him better that year. And it was like, hey, you're dealing with something that no one else here is dealing with, and you're being incredible about it. I can deal with any of my stuff and move on and, you know, just go play football. So it was, it was great. You know, the way he handled it was great for us. And, I mean, I, I wouldn't wish that upon anybody else, but hey, he, he did a lot with it and he played at a high level. It's pretty strong stuff when you really break it down and think about what he's saying there. They all know what's going to happen. Yeah, they all right. know that the moment the trade is made, the Trey Lance is going to become the guy. Right. Number one, Jimmy G was great about it, never complained, never said anything, and became an inspiration to the rest of the team for how he dealt with it. And at the end, what did George Kittle say? I wouldn't wish it on anybody either. Yeah. They So at some level, there's got to be guys in that locker room, even if they're not saying it, if they're following the lead of Jimmy Garoppolo, who hasn't said anything about it in the building, hasn't done anything to cause any problems for the team in the building, if they are following his lead and not complaining about it, you have to wonder if they're thinking deep down, man, these guys are screwing yeah. Jimmy G. They're really sure. screwing him. And he performed last year in a way, you could argue, you could argue, yeah. that, that proved that they didn't need to go out and get Trey Lance, although you could argue that, that at the end of the day, he did play in a way that demonstrated he's reached yeah. his ceiling and they need somebody else if they want to win Super Bowls. That, that, that you know, it, it, if, hey, follow the lead of Jimmy Garoppolo. It's great. Listen, I got a lot of respect for the guy. He's tough. He's shown to be mentally tough, certainly. He is a good football player. He's not a star. We know that, but he's good. But, like, the, the more important thing to me here is, is – Follow the lead of your head coach, Kyle Shanahan. And you're saying it right. Like, again, I think the players, they get caught up sometimes in the emotions of the personal connection with the quarterback and all that. And then they, even the players, tie it together with, wait, we won, he's the quarterback, and that's the way our society in football is right now. So they give him a lot of that credit. But, like, we're, that's why we're here. We're, we're here to tell you that – no, this is why you take your lumps with Trey Lance because of what you were talking about a few minutes ago, Mike. Ultimately, Trey Lance, the talent, what George Kittle says, the potential, all of that. You take some of the lumps to get to a point in December, hopefully, where you go, wait, we're going to be in the playoffs and we're going to be a lot we're going to be a lot more dangerous than we have been in years past. We're not going to have to play the Vikings in the divisional round on the way to the Super Bowl and go, "You know what? I don't trust my quarterback. We got to run the ball every play." And then play in the NFC Championship game and go, "You know what? Let's just run the ball every play and not even trust Jimmy Garoppolo." And then play in the Super Bowl and play pretty much a perfect football game and you're supposed to beat the Kansas City Chiefs and why didn't they win? Oh, that's right. I'm not trying to be a jerk. I hate to say it. I do because I hate to put it on the quarterback. But I mean, the drive before the drive of missing the post to Emmanuel Sanders, there was throws missed then. The whole second half, there was plays like that. Last year in the playoffs, like you talked about, they beat the Packers. Yes, it was not because of Jimmy Garoppolo, right? So that's where the team has to buy into Shanahan to know that he's given them a guy that's going to put them over the top. Mahomes is there. He thinks this is a guy that Mahomes can't come back on when they're down 20 to 10 with four and a half minutes. That's what they got to put their faith in and Shanahan with. And, you know, I had forgotten about those plays before the miss of Emmanuel Sanders where Chris Jones right, got in his there. head. Remember that? He had Kittle wide Kittle open. Kittle wide open and he missed the complete. Right, yeah. exactly. Right. Yeah. Yes. Right. There was a, there was a few. One plays. time he didn't even pull the trigger. He didn't pull the trigger because he was a, he was, conscious of the possibility yes. of Chris Jones jumping up and knocking right. it down. But you're right. I remember breaking that down every possible way. And they have to have trust in Kyle Shanahan. Yep. And Jim and, and this is this is where this occurred to me. You know, 
every once in a while you hear someone spout off the 49ers talking points about the situation. And one of them is Jimmy G's a great guy. He's a great guy. If we keep him, he'll be great. He'll be great. Well, it's hard to reconcile that with Jimmy G saying I wouldn't wish last year on anyone. But, but, see, he'll internalize all that. He'll show up and he'll do everything that's expected of him. He will be the person that they need him to be. And they're using his nature against him. Sure. They have a they read on right. who he is psychologically and how he's made up and how he'll go about his business. Yeah. And even if he doesn't like it, even if he admitted to you under sodium pentothal or a lie detector test that I think my employer is screwing me, he's wired in a way to go along with it because he's got this concept of team and his yes. teammates and we're all in this right, together right. and let's go do our thing and try to win. And and I, I'm not saying it's anything diabolic or despicable, but the reality is the 49ers benefit from his mindset and yeah. they are kind of using it against him to keep him dangling as they figure out what the hell they're going to do. Yeah, I, Mike, I don't, I don't disagree with you. And unfortunately... This is a very common tale of the NFL, which it's very, it's gross in my opinion. And I'm not putting this to the 49ers, but it's all teams. I can speak to it with my personal experience. The better, the better teammate you are, the harder worker you are, the better soldier you are for the organization, more times or not, you're going to be the guy that they're going to go, well, he can handle it. Well, he can, we'll screw him over because he'll just suck it up and come to work tomorrow. And unfortunately, really what the NFL has done, and I think we're starting to see the, what this is happening in front of us, they've really rewarded the squeaky wheel gets oiled. And we're seeing the squeaky wheels are starting to go, yep, yep, I'm, I'm sick of getting screwed over being the good guy. I'm just going to be squeaky. I want to get the hell out of town. I want to do this. I want to do that. I'm getting the hell out of here. I'm squeaky. All right? I know I could probably come up with a better uh, – Squeaky's good. Good. No, you got squeaky's it, right? Squeaky's good. Yeah. And that's where Jimmy Garoppolo, he ain't squeaky like you're talking about. He just comes in and all right, man, that was that's okay. I just got to work harder. I just I'll be a better guy, you know, and, and, and unfortunately, yes, it's those guys a lot of the times that get taken advantage of. And the thing that he has to be concerned about, because there are plenty of people like, well, where else is he going to get twenty five million dollars this year? Well, where else is he going to have a chance to start? Well, look, here's the risk. The worst case scenario for Jimmy Garoppolo. We've laid it out before, but it's important that everybody understands this. Trey Lance and Jimmy Garoppolo show up for training camp. Garoppolo is cleared. He's able to throw. Let's go have a competition. Let's see who's the guy, if the 49ers even intend on having a fair competition. Yeah, right. Fair competition or unfair competition, whatever it may be, at the end of camp, Trey Lance is the guy. Okay, fine. Trey Lance is a starter. He's won the job fair and square. Hey, Jimmy, at least you tried. Here's Bart Simpson with the cake gif where he puts the at least you tried cake into the trash can. <laughs> and they say to Jimmy, look, you know, you're not the starter anymore, Jimmy. You know how football goes. The starter gets starter money. You're due to make $25 million. You're not the starter. So we can't really justify, Jimmy, paying you that much because we got other guys here that deserve the money, and they're starters, Nick Bosa, Debo Samuel, et cetera. So we're only going to pay you 10. 10 is pretty good to be a backup. 10, 10 is the high end of the going rate to be a backup. And maybe we'll put some incentives on there, playing time. If Trey Lance gets injured, you can earn some more back. But that's all we can do. That's all we can do. And, you know, if you say no to it, you know what we're going to do. We're going to release you. Yeah. And then you got nothing. And then some of it doesn't even need to be said. But the implication is he gets thrown onto the open market just before the start of the season. The depth charts are set. He is screwed. He is S-O-L at that point. And... It be, he's going to nice guy his way into having nothing by way of a guaranteed salary for 2022 because once he passes a physical, they can cut him at any point up until the start of the regular season and owe him not a single penny, Chris. That's where his good nature can really be used to screw him. And I think at the end of the day, that's what he needs to be very concerned about, and he needs to have a strategy for avoiding that outcome. Uh, yeah, de definitely. I, I, definitely, I think if, if it gets to that point, right, you know, you would hope that the agent could have a little bit of a feel for, wait, is there a team out there that you could actually maybe go play for and and still get $10 million or more than that? And, okay, fine, screw you 49ers, cut us, 
That's fine. We're out of here. We got a place to go. Carolina likes us. They're going to give us $12 million a year or something of that, of, of, of that sort. You know, but – at the same but would a team do that, Chris? Let me I, stop you. No, you're right. I don't know. We, we get to we get to Labor Day weekend. Right, I know. And he hasn't been there at all. Yeah. And they got Sam Donald ready to go, and they got Matt Corral ready to go. And you're going to bring in Jimmy Garoppolo? No, probably not. And get him up to speed like that? No, you're and right. And pay him twelve it, million? It's, it's, yeah, that's the problem. You're right. That is the problem. One hundred percent. That's where I was about to go. So that's where. Sorry. You know, again, no, it's okay. You're all good. That's you. You made it quick for me. But yeah, I think that's where you know that's a little weird. And then. I'll say what's weird here, too, is just the fact of, you know, I think we've brought this up a little bit, but, you know, yeah, it is. Okay, they want to start Trey Lance. We know that. Man, Trey Lance, he played two games last year. He got hurt in both games. That's got to be a little scary. He's a little reckless and raw, like we've talked about. So he doesn't quite have that, you know, governor yet of going like, wait, let me slide. Let me not take this hit from Isaiah Simmons and hurt my knee on the goal line. Let me not do that. And that's got to scare the 49ers, too. And it goes back to our old conversation that we've had so many times where, you know, to this situation, it, this is a Super Bowl team, you know, and, and that's where there is value of a Jimmy Garoppolo being on the roster. I mean, I certainly wouldn't go Trey Lance, Nate Sudfeld into the 2022 season. Let me just tell you that. There is no effing way I'm going into the season with those two as my quarterbacks. And to have that type of team with those two quarterbacks is stupid. There's no other way to say it. They need somebody else there. And that's where the other angle of this thing is interesting. But then there is the distraction of Jimmy G being high in Trey Lance and all of that, too. So I don't know if the value's there for that. So there's a there's definitely another talking point there or something to hey, digest. You give the job to Trey Lance and you keep Jimmy G on the roster. Let's say he says, OK, I'll take the 10 million. Yeah, I'll take 15. I'll take whatever. Right. Then. You go with Lance, he suffers the growing pains, he has a few rough games, all of a sudden, Jimmy G is the most popular guy in town. No all doubt. All of a sudden, no doubt. you've got a clamoring in the locker room, you've got a clamoring in the stands, you've got people who cover the team saying Jimmy G is better than Trey Lance. That's part of the problem, too. 100%. And the irony in all of this. Yes, yes. Yep. Here's the other irony in all this. You mentioned the injuries. I mean, why did they ultimately go out and get Trey Lance? What was one of the motivators? They can't trust Jimmy G to stay healthy, dating back to the torn ACL that was his own damn fault right. in 2018, the ankle injury in 2020. They can't count on him, on him to be there every week like Tom Brady, like Eli Manning, like Peyton Manning, like you know other great quarterbacks we've seen. Aaron Rodgers, but for a couple of broken collarbones, he's been durable. Russell Wilson, but for mangling his finger. He's been very durable. They can't trust Jimmy G to stay healthy. And now all of a sudden, every time we put Trey Lance on the field for a game, he gets injured. Holy crap. What are we going to do here? So they, they've got to be wondering how to properly balance this. How do you protect yourself against Trey Lance truly not being ready, but also avoid being in a situation where the masses and the guys who count in that locker room are going to want Jimmy G if he's still on the roster. It's a mess. It's a mess. And the sooner they clean it up, the better off they'll be. But it seems to me like your friend Kyle Shanahan believes he can keep it all under control. And to his credit, he did last year. Yeah, that that's that's goes back to the word the the magic of Kyle Shanahan. And I think, you know, again, co these these coaches like him, McVay, they have an unbelievable ability to communicate and still challenge their team, have a way about them where the rest of the team, like George Kittle kind of said in the answer, like, you know, we they got to, oh, wait, we got these new plays and I got to go in here and Shanahan wants us to work on this and that and that and this. And, okay, well, okay, here's the practice schedule today. All right, we got to work on these new plays to screw over this team. You know, it, with that kind of culture and the way Shanahan, the type of players they have there, as we've talked about before, it's kind of pedal to the metal. They, they don't have a lot of time, it doesn't seem like, to sit there and, you know, hmm, should it be Jimmy G or hmm, should it be Trey Lance? You know, they're, they are, you know, have that, that pedal to the metal type of culture, for lack of a better way to say it there. To what, to what Kittle said. And there is kind of a no excuses, like, let's just go, let's play hard. You you be the best you can at your position, and we'll go from there. And the 49ers, yeah, they've shown the ability to overcome some of these obstacles. But this is a different kind of obstacle. This one, to me, is a little bit, you know, it's all cool right now and everything now. 
That's great. But like you said, we get into the season. It's in the season. It's Trey Lance. It is very a, a very big topic with Trey Lance. The spotlight is on him because of the draft and the trade and everything that went into that. And to me, it just, yes, even for a guy like Shanahan, is, is flirting with danger in your locker room and, and affecting your football team. And on one hand, Chris, you can look at it and say, it's not fair to this kid who's raw and he's trying to learn his way and he's got this constant distraction and issue and does he really have the support of the team? Does he not have the support of the team? He's got guys in the locker room looking at him funny. He's got more pressure on him when he's at practice. He's got more pressure on him in the games if Jimmy G somehow is still on the roster but not the starter. You can say that on one hand. On the other hand, you can say, well, this is the ultimate This is the ultimate litmus test. Let's see if he can handle it. Because yeah, sure. if he can't handle this, he can't handle making the throws that need to be made if we get to a Super Bowl again. We need somebody with the mental toughness who can lock in and go do his job and find motivation in the uncertainty. Oh, you, you got some doubts about me? Well, let's go erase those doubts. Let's go. Let's go. I'm ready. Let's go. That's, Jimmy that's G's late. telling the team, that's fine. Let's go. Bring Ooh. it on. I'll compete. Let's go. Let's do it. I'm ready. I think I think may, maybe maybe in some weird sort of way, Kyle's trying to push buttons to kind of draw that out of Trey Lance and turn him into a guy who's going to go be an ass kicker week in and week out. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I don't doubt that. Sure, sure. It's just that's easier said than done. You know, again, for a young quarterback and he's, oh, I'm going to be in the first team reps and man, and it's going to be maybe some bad decisions and some balls hitting the ground and then the backup's going to come in and everything's going to be grease lightning and boom, boom, boom. And oh, okay, back to the starter, you know, do that. Oh, you know, Shanahan will probably have to cheat some plays in practice to make Trey Lance look good every now and then so Jimmy doesn't outshine him. You know, those are the issues I worry about. Here's another issue I worry about, a little what we talked about a little last year, but what I would worry about too is, okay, you start Trey Lance. He falters like you're talking about, you know, or maybe he even gets a little banged up, you know, let's say late November. But, you know, the worst case scenario, let's just say he goes through a bad stretch and doesn't play well, and now they're fighting for their playoff life, and they have Jimmy Garoppolo on the roster, and now they play him. And now Jimmy Garoppolo – plays well down the stretch of the season. The 49ers make the playoffs and they make a little run with Jimmy Garoppolo as their starter. Now we're going to where, where are we going to be at next year after that again? Now, now, oh, hey, Trey Lance, you're the starter. Hey, it's, it's year three and damn, nobody's got any confidence in the, I mean, you, you stumbled and Jimmy did good again, but we're letting him go and we, three first round picks for you. There's just too many what ifs that can go a wrong way in my opinion. And that's where it's risky. And I compare that to what Andy Reid did with the Chiefs and Patrick Mahomes when they traded up to number 10, selected Patrick Mahomes in 2017. It was understood from the get-go. Alex Smith has another year, and the next year it's going to be Mahomes. And nobody said boo. Nobody pushed back. Nobody was like, are you sure? And and it was kind of a similarity there in that Alex Smith had yes. taken the Chiefs as far as he was going to right, take them. right. And the Chiefs needed to go to the next level, and they made a strategic decision to go to the next level, and they had a plan from the get-go as to what was going to happen. Mahomes is sitting all year. Next year's his year. This year we're worried about Alex Smith, 2017. Next year is next year. And and it worked, and it worked. And, and the difference is throughout 2017, there were flashes, there were comments, there was evidence right. that they had something up their sleeve. Definitely, the preseason was going to be pretty damn special. Yeah, right. the last right. game of the year, the, all of it. You're you're exactly right. That's where too is weird because to the, your point, and like I, I'm I'm glad you went here, and where it's a little different too though is you know Mahomes, even though yes he sat a year and all that. Like, nobody was worried about, well, Mahomes, we're not sure if he got enough reps. I mean, he threw the ball 70,000 times a game at Texas Tech. So, you didn't have to worry about that. That's what's weird about this one, too. I mean, Trey Lance, you go back to his college games, you have a lot of games where you go, he threw the ball 14 times that game. And it was like, you know, simple, simple throwing of play action pass, one guy open, boom, boom, that type of play, too. So, that's where it's like, it's it's another, like, part of the – equation here uh for trey lance i i still stick with my take that they missed on patrick mahomes because they thought they were going to get kirk cousins in free agency the next year they didn't i don't disagree with you there yeah yeah 
Then they said no to Tom Brady when they should have said yes. And then after they saw Mahomes and Brady in Super Bowl 55, they overreacted. And they decided we're going to get ourselves in position to get whichever quarterback we want after Trevor Lawrence and Zach Wilson. We're going to go do it. And that's what we're doing. And nobody can talk us out of it. And we did it. And they did it a month before the draft. Yeah. And then we spent that whole month trying to figure out who the hell they were going to take. I just feel like they got themselves mentally twisted into a pretzel. Uh, yes. And now they're trying to oh. untwist. They're still trying to untwist no it No doubt. No doubt. I mean, I, a lot of people in the NFL, I wanna, I'll want to. i sit here and go, damn, if they just drafted Mac Jones first off, too, part of the pretzel is they gonna go, they've been in the Super Bowl. I mean, I just, I just, that's the way I think. The, Mac Jones is the quarterback of the 49ers last year. They go to the Super Bowl. Uh, that's the way I feel. So that adds to it too. There's the pressure of that situation on there out of this whole thing as well that, you know, yeah, I, I, I Mike, I don't disagree with your little timeline thought process there. I, I think there's some, probably some truth to the, some of that, especially the, the Mahomes Kirk cousins thing that let it off. And we know the Brady and the, the, the flirting there was real too. Uh, but yeah, I think you're, you're probably onto something there. You're the first one to say it. He wanted to go there, and they said, no, thank you. Think about that. Tom Brady wanted to go to the 49ers, the team he rooted for growing up. He was at the catch game, if you haven't heard. By the way, Jerome Bettis is from Detroit also. <laughs> and uh, and they said no. And, and when you consider the alternate realities with the quarterbacks we just mentioned, with Mahomes, they got at least one Super Bowl championship since 2017. I think that's a given. Yes. They say yes to Brady. Pretty safe to say they're in one if haven't won one. Pretty safe to say. The rest of their team, every bit as good as the rest of the Buccaneers team Definitely. in 2020. Yeah. They win one. Yeah. Kirk Cousins, and, and look, I know this is against my nature. This is going to be regarded as a he loves him, not he loves him, <laughs> not comment. But I think you and I will both agree they don't won Super Bowl 54 yes. Yes. with Kirk Cousins. I agree, yes, right? 100%. Yes, I think you know, Kirk Cousins is a notch above Jimmy Garoppolo uh, for sure. Yes, so I'm, I'm with you in that thought process. 100%. And then Mac Jones would have gotten him there last year. Four guys, four guys they could have had, and they've had Jimmy G the whole time, and now they're hoping to will Trey Lance into being whatever it is that they need him to be. Look, I don't wish this on Jimmy G. I don't wish it on Trey Lance. I don't wish it on 49ers fans. And the sooner it's over, the better off everybody is going to be. That's the one thing that I think the organization fails to recognize. You try to put your head down and power through it. It is potentially going to be to the detriment of the team, of the individual players, of the overall peace of mind of the decision makers. At some point, you just got to rip off that Band-Aid and you got to move on. But I think they're going to delay it as long as they can so they can be sure that Trey Lance is ready. And that's Kyle Shanahan's job. Offseason program, training camp, preseason. Get this guy ready or get this to, guy to the point where we can make a smart assessment a reliable assessment as to whether or not he truly is you, ready to do go. Do you think it's ready to go or the fact that they're just stubborn and they don't want to give Jimmy Garoppolo away for anything or for, for nothing? You know, it's, it's, it's a little bit of both, I guess is really, I think it's a combination. Yeah, right. I think it's a combination. Right. They're very stubborn about getting value for Jimmy G and they're apoplectic about the fact that no one wanted to, to show up with major draft assets for the guy they're trying to get rid of. But I also think that they are concerned at some level that Lance isn't going to be the guy. How can you not be concerned? You don't, what, what did we see last year that makes us say, Oh, Hey, he's the guy. Was there a throw? Was there a moment? Was there anything where we say he's the guy? I think in preseason, he had like a long touchdown throw he on did. a busted coverage. Right. But other than that, is there, is there anything you can think of? Well, he had Last the long year. throw against the Texans, right? Remember that one? Where kind of the same play as your preseason play you're talking about. He rolled yeah. out to the right and threw the back back to the left side to Debo Samuel. That's so, right. That's but right. you're right. But, no, I, I mean, I, I get you. that That's where we're all, you know, anxious to see. It was a little few and far between. Yeah, there was that play that we're talking about the Houston Texans game. But if we go back and digest that football game, as we talked a little last week with the quarterback rankings, there were throws that were all over the place. And Shanahan had to give him a bunch of gimme completions at the end of the game just to get him back to 50%. So that, to your point, you're not wrong with what you said there. I just was pointing out, yeah, there was one. We, we saw little snippets here and there. We did. 
But that's, you know, snippets. And what I even said last week when we watched that, you know, their Shanahan specials, what I call them a little bit. You know, that's that's a play where it's it's dialed up. Shanahan got it. I mean, he's going to make it look good almost for no matter who's the quarterback. It's the meat and potato stuff we got to see work the right way. Can he run the offense the right way on, you know, the third, third, and five of the drive to keep the drive going? Those are the things that we got to see and we're not sure about as far as the decision, the right throw, catchable ball, all of that type of stuff is still, to your point, I think, what we need to see from Trey Lance. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.